there, everybody. This is Mel Allen speaking to you from a Yankee stadium that, if I can find the word to yell over this microphone and over the crowd, there are literally some five to seven or 8,000 people jamming the field here at Yankee Stadium and still yelling with signs saying, yes, we did. We're number one on the electric scoreboard as the Yankees in one of the most fantastic finishes I've ever seen in the history of baseball beat a rugged Royals team seven to six to win the American League championship. Once again, Yankee Stadium is the home of champions. And in a moment, we hope to bring you some of the dressing room action. All brought to you by Getty Premium and new Getty Unleaded Regular. The higher octane gasolines with the lower prices. In the best three out of five division playoff for the American League title, the Yankees won the opener in Kansas City four to one. With Catfish Hunter the winner and Larry Gear the loser. Only to see Kansas City come back to win the second game seven to three. Spritdorf got the win. Leonard had started and Figueroa who started tonight was the losing pitcher. And then the scene shifted to Yankee Stadium. And you can hear the multitude in the background roaring, happy. The first title ever to come back to Yankee Stadium after the great dynasty that lasted so many years since 1964. And in game three, the Yankees moved ahead in games two to one with a five to three win over Kansas City. A game that Doc Ellis got the victory in and the loser was Andy Hassler. Only to see Kansas City come back in game four yesterday and win it seven to four to tie it up at two all. Gura started the ball game. Bird in relief got the win and Hunter was charged with a loss. And then tonight, Ed Figueroa, who had won 19 games during the year for the Yankees, started and pitched magnificent ball, although in the very first inning, his mound opponent, by the way, was Dennis Leonard, with two out, gave up a double to Brett and a home run to Mayberry. And the Royals were off to a quick two to nothing lead, but the Yankees struck back as Rivers tripled. White beat out an infield hit. Stole second and rode home on Munson single, and it was a two-all ball game. The Royals went ahead three to two in the second inning on a single, a stolen base by Rojas, and a single by Martinez. But the Yankees moved ahead four to three in the third inning in a seesaw struggle. A Bronx brawl it was. And once again it was Mickey Rivers who got on base his first four times up and started every Yankee rally as he singled a center and White walked and Munson came up to bat and Patton came in to relieve as Whitey Herzog used about five pitchers and Munson got a base hit. An infield out got the second run in and the Yankees led four to three at the end of three innings. Meantime Figueroa had begun to settle down and the Royals could do nothing with him. Inning after inning from the third inning through the eighth while the Yankees meantime built up a six to three lead with two runs in the sixth inning started once again by Mickey Rivers beating out a bunch sacrificed to second by White. Then came a base hit by Munson and Chambliss got a base hit and an error and the Yankees had themselves two runs a six to three lead and things looked pretty good until suddenly in the eighth inning Figueroa who had tired gave up a single to lead off man Al Collins. Billy Martin took him out and brought in Grant Jackson who gave up a single to Walford and then Brett hit a home run into the right field seats 
Two homers accounting for five of the Royals runs and it was a 6-6 ball game. And so we came to the last half of the ninth inning. Chris Chambliss was the first man to bat. And the right-hander after Patton and Hastert had come in on the mound, Mark Littell got ready to pitch. Time was called for till they cleared the field for a little while. Some people had thrown something on the field. And on the first pitch, Chambliss swung and hit a fantastic, soaring, beautiful, sensational drive over the 385 mark for a home run that gave the Yankees not only victory, but the American League champion as ship. And on the electric sign on the scoreboard, it still is showing New York Yankees, 1976, American League champions. The totals, the Yankees, seven runs, 11 hits in one era. The Royals, six runs, 11 hits in one era. And shortly, we'll go down to the dressing room where John Sterling hopes to get some of the players and people on the air. But first of all, let's have this word from our sponsor, Getty Premium. If you buy unleaded gasoline, you may have noticed that lead isn't the only thing missing. It's probably pretty low on performance, too. That's because most unleaded's just don't have a high enough octane rating to give you the performance you want, the performance you used to get from your regular. In fact, according to standards set by the American Society for Testing and Materials, the people who set gasoline standards used by the federal and state governments, only three unleaded gasolines have a high enough octane to be called regular. To help you choose between these three, one of them usually sells for less. Getty. Getty Unleaded Regular gives you the clean running engine you expect from an unleaded, plus the octane performance you want. And you pay less than you would for most other major unleaded. Now think a minute. Why settle for an unleaded gasoline that's below regular when you can get one that's regular? Getty Unleaded Regular. Once again, we've got what's best for your car. This is WMCA Strauss Communications in New York. Hi, I'm John Sterling, and I've got sports for you. New York Yankees baseball, New York Nets basketball, New York Islanders hockey, NFL football, Notre Dame football, New York, New Jersey college basketball, WMCA sports for all seasons. This is Mel Allen speaking to you again from Yankee Stadium, and you can hear in the background the roar of the crowd. What a ball game. Seven to six Yankees. The Yankees champions of the American League for the first time since 1964. It's been a long drought, but the fans are really eating it up now. And this whole ball game was simply a rip roaring, rousing battle between two great teams, the Kansas City Royals and the New York Yankees. A power packed payoff with Chris Chambliss slamming the first pitch over the right center field fence in the last half of the ninth inning to give the Yankees their 7-6 to well-deserved victory and American League championship. Thousands are still out on the field as the Yankees won their 30th American League pennant. 20 of which I have been fortunate enough to have been privy to. But never have I seen a crowd like this. Most of the tremendous crowd that was here, the largest of the season at New Yankee Stadium, have departed. But there still remain some 5,000 people yelling. They're all over the infield and the outfield. They're yelling, we're number one. And they're yelling, now think series. Just listen to them in the background. Well, after 12 years, you can't blame them. The Yankees' 30th American League pennant win. 
And so it'll be the Yankees against the Cincinnati Reds when the World Series opens on Saturday. Bedlam has broken loose at Yankee Stadium, and I'm sure it's that way downstairs in the dressing room. John Sterling fighting and clawing his way, trying to get someone on the microphone to interview. A little while earlier, we had the opportunity to shake the hand of George Steinbrenner, owner of the New York Yankees, and Gabe Paul, their president, and Cedric Ta uh, Tallis, the vice president. Our congratulations to them and to Billy Martin, who as a player, we had the privilege of watching assist in winning many a pennant here at Yankee Stadium. In his first year as a manager of the Yankees, his first full year, he directed the Yankees to this championship that ended in a manner that reminded you of Bobby Thompson's home run that gave the Giants the victory. The home run that they say was heard around the world. Described by the late Russ Hodges, who worked with us for a long while before moving to the Giants. And this was very much like it. All of a sudden, an explosion. And boy, that set off an explosion. This crowd of nearly 57,000 people. And thousands are still on the field. But they're gradually starting to leave very slowly. But it was a ball game that will remember, be remembered by them by all of us who were here and be remembered by Bill White and Phil Rizzuto and Frank Messer as long as they live all the writers who were here this is one of those games of all the thousands that have been played in the history of Major League Baseball that they will be talking and writing about in the years to come. What a fitting finish to the 75th year of the American League. Now, 1976 American League pennant was on the line tonight. And how these two teams scrapped. Each team scoring two runs in the first inning. The Royals moving ahead three to two in the second. The Yankees coming back to move ahead four to three at the end of three. And then six to three at the end of six. And suddenly a three-run homer in the eighth inning by George Brett. Tied it up at six all. It put a damper on the crowd. But Chris Chambliss, who has done it so many times this season, getting a key hit to win a ball game, crashed the first pitch served to him by Mark Littell. It wasn't just a home run. It wasn't just a base hit. It wasn't just another honor for Chris Chambliss. He brought honor to the entire Yankee organization. He brought home a championship to the home of champions. The official paid attendance, 56,821. All that they could pack in here. And of course, there will be hundreds of thousands in the years to come who, in recounting this magnificent, exciting game, will say that they were here. That's human nature. But what a ball game. I'm still excited, as you can uh, hear. It's hard to remember a game to equal this one. Unless I think back to a World Series when the Yankees lost one. When Mazeroski hit the home run in the last of the ninth inning for Pittsburgh to beat the Yankees in the seventh game of the World Series and how the Pittsburgh crowd exploded. But it gives me an opportunity as I pause for a moment to congratulate Mr. George Steinbrenner, Mr. Gabe Paul, and all the members of the Yankee organization for bringing back to Yankee Stadium not only a pennant, but fans 
who once again simply exploded just as Chris Shambliss exploded. As I think back during the course of this season, many a time they would stand up and give ovations. The time that they gave an ovation to Doyle Alexander, who had a no-hitter going into the ninth inning, made him come out and take a bow even though he didn't pitch the no-hitter after he was taken out after a base hit. It showed that these fans, everybody loves a winner, but these fans, even throughout the season, were most appreciative of all the efforts on the part of the Yankee organization to bring an exciting team back here to Yankee Stadium. And that they did. Gabe Paul making some wonderful trades, some that people didn't think were very good, but trades that turned out beautifully. And now I understand that John Sterling has finally made his way down to the locker room. So, John, if you're ready, take it away. Well, I'm down here in the uh, tunnel between the Yankee uh, clubhouse and the interview room, and I have the big old Oscar Gamble here. And first year with the team, Oscar, and you win the pennant, the ninth inning of the last game, and it's got to be the wildest, most dramatic, exciting feeling I guess you had in baseball. Best, best feeling I ever had in baseball. I'm just exhausted. It was great. It was great. Well, you, you guys are down right away, and Rivers gets on base like you had to. You got on four straight times of hits. You get back, you lead. Brett ties it up. Did you have any feeling about Chandler in the ninth inning? Well, yes. Yeah, you know, I know we had three left handers coming up, and I figured, you know, that he'd be trying to get ahead of Chandler, and he hit the first pitch out. It was just, you know, just so excited. One big hit after another. You had 17 homers this year, 15 in this ballpark. You got to love playing here. Well, yes, yeah, you know, I thought they were going to start a left hand tonight. I was, you know, I was surprised that they started the right hand, and, you know, I was just excited about playing it, you know, the final game. And another thing, Oscar, uh, you know, Billy didn't take any left-handers out. They kept bringing left-handers to make Billy change, but he never, he never changed. And, uh, and, uh, and do you uh, had your wraps against the left-hand uh, uh, and the pitchers, and of course, Chambliss was hitting lefties all year long. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, they were trying to decoy. They wanted us to uh, take our lefties out early. They just, you know, a decoy. They started the right hand, and then they were going to run the left to right in there to get in trouble. And, you know, they could take our lefties out, and then they could bring another right in on them. But we stayed with the left handers, and, you know, we just stayed in there and played hard. It was just a foul all the way. That's yeah, something. Uh, the feeling on the team uh, in the last of the ninth winning with a home run has got to be the most dramatic shot since... Uh, since Bobby Thomas, I just was afraid Chris was going to get hurt running down around the bases. Well, yeah, you know, I know they'd be coming out, you know, like, and I start grabbing gloves, no sooner he hit it, you know. I went and put my glove down inside. I said, now, Chris going to hit a home run right here. We're going to win it in this inning. So I took my glove off the step so, you know, they couldn't get it. And he did, and I, it was just exciting. Well, Oscar, I think it's great that Trey brought you over for Dobson, and you're a Yankee and a Bennett winner, and we've waited so long for it. And I'll let you go along to the party, but thank you, Oscar. Congratulations. Hey, good luck in the series, too. Thank you. Thank you. Oscar just getting a big kiss, and not for me either. We're down here. Uh, uh, I know Mary Allen is upstairs. There's John Sterling downstairs. Uh, the clubhouse has is, uh, is been held off, and we're on a phone uh, between the interview room and the um, the clubhouse. <laughs> you know, I don't... Uh, I don't know uh, when I've been a party to uh, anything uh, more dramatic and uh, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, the Royals, of course, got uh, the winning run uh, on second and uh, another run on first base and a really ground ball to short and Greg Nettles made a big play cutting the ball off and, and forcing the runner at second base and then the last of the ninth inning, uh, Chambers hitting a home run. Hey, Mickey Morabito, um, first of all, congratulations, and all, uh, let's see if we can get Roy White or so. Mickey Rivers would be great. Mickey, can you get Mickey before he goes on the other side? Spencer Ross there, hi. Uh, wild scene uh, downstairs with the press from all over the world, and like really all over the world, they've uh, seen this game coast to coast. And, uh, like, you know, how could, how could it be more dramatic? Ninth inning of the fifth and final uh, championship game and a home run by uh, the big guy, Chris Chambers, who's been getting the big hits all year long. Uh, Munson was great tonight. Uh, Mickey Rivers, Roy White, great tonight, as always. And uh, 
we really got to give some due to, to Kansas City. Uh, they played such a tremendous series going down to the uh, to the uh, to the ninth inning and battling back when they were three runs down with uh, with George Best. Thank you, darling. Just got to give that to you. I want it all by myself. <laughs> How did you do that? I was tearing from the first to the seventh. What happened on the eighth and ninth? Eighth and ninth, the fans got weak on me, you know, and I got pissed about it.
for the for the American League, and uh, you're happy. You're just about having this great series and having the whole nation uh, watch this series go down the ninth inning. Just fantastic. Uh, you know, that, this, this game is so great. Last year's World Series, this year's American uh, League Championship Series. You can't have a better sport than this. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Bob, Bob uh, 56,000, almost 57,000 jamming this ballpark in a few years from now. Uh, there'll be about 200,000 people over here. That's exactly right. I've had that experience before. But it was a thrilling game, and the fans here are just marvelous. It's awfully tough for White Ears, like in the Kansas City Royals, and I feel for them because they really carried the Yankees right to the end. But but they didn't do it, and uh, the Yankees did, and it was a tremendous victory. A five-game series, and it goes down to the bottom of the ninth inning. I think that's about close enough. Just sensational. It really was. But, Bob, I thank you. You've been rooting for somebody because you've lost your voice. Uh, Bob Fisher, the vice president of the Lee McPhail of the American League, and uh, I guess Bob can't say it officially. He's got to be a little happy tonight. Uh, Bob, a longtime Yankee. He was their PR director. Here's Thurman Munson. Thurman, can we get you for a minute? Thurman said no, and he walked away as he was getting ready to go into the party. And um, I guess we could go on with this uh, forever. Uh, uh, other Yankees will be going in the hallways, but uh, I think we've uh, caught the spirit of what's happening tonight here at, at Yankee Stadium. It is happening. Uh, you know, you go through baseball year after year, and you don't get too many pennants. Uh, the Phillies uh, won their first pennant in 1950, and uh, they got knocked out in the uh, in the championship series. All right. And um, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Just talking to an old friend. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, the Yankees are uh, not in a... a a pennant, a divisional playoff since 1964, and it goes down to the final game, and, and they win in the last ninth inning uh, with a home run, which is uh, written in the storybooks, uh, but this is real life, and in reality occurred in, in Yankee Stadium tonight, so uh, it's really something, and uh, it's one uh, game uh, that we're going to remember for a long time, and uh, obviously we're very glad we could have, have been a part of it. I hope you caught kind of the spirit. Of course, WMCA will be carrying the World Series beginning Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon from Cincinnati. And then um, the next week uh, in, uh, in from here on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, we probably will be doing this scene again, hopefully a uh, winning championship scene, but we'll be uh, doing our pre- and post-game shows uh, next week uh, during the World Series. So uh, we have uh, exhausted uh, the Yankees in the hallway for the moment. I think we'll go up to the stairs to Mel Allen, who can cap off our... Um, our uh, post-game show, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And for those of you who want to talk about it, we'll talk about it tomorrow evening. We'll have three hours on, no game on tomorrow night. We'll talk from 7 to 10 on the talk show tomorrow evening. So right now, let's go back upstairs in the radio booth to uh, Mel Allen. Recently, a survey was taken of the prices of premium gasoline. The survey covered hundreds of service stations in the northeastern United States. Virtually every major oil company was included. Right now, I'd like to tell you the results of that survey. In Portland, Maine, Getty Premium sold for less per gallon. In Boston, Getty Premium sold for less. In northern New Jersey, Philadelphia, and New York, Getty Premium sold for less. In fact, in every state where Getty gasoline is sold, the survey showed Getty Premium sold for less per gallon than most major premiums. More premium gas for your money. That has to be the best mileage ingredient you can buy. So the next time you pull in for gas, pull in for Getty Premium Gasoline. Getty. Once again, we've got what's best for your car. And so on Thursday, October the 14th, 1976, the New York Yankees, in an amazing finish in the last of the ninth inning, a home run crashed by Chris Chambliss, gave them the American League pennant, the 30th in their history. A ball game that lasted three hours and 15 minutes, so that at 11.45 on October 14th, I'd almost forgotten we're past midnight, so that it is really now the 15th. On the first pitch, served by Mark Attell, Chris Chambliss 
sent nearly 57,000 fans into absolute ecstasy with that line drive home run over the right center field fence. It was a ball game, a seesaw struggle. I repeat for those of you who may have tuned in late, in which the Kansas City Royals and the New York Yankees, each with two wins and the best three out of five in the divisional playoffs for the American League pennant. The Royals scored two runs in the first half of the first inning. The Yankees came back with two. The Royals got one in the second to go ahead three to two. The Yankees got two in the last of the third to go ahead four to three. Things settled down for a while, but the Yankees picked up two more in the sixth, and it looked pretty good as they led six to three at the end of six. But Kansas City still in there battling under the leadership of manager Whitey Herzog, who originally had signed for the Yankees going way back, though he never played for them, came up with a three-run home run off the bat of George Brett, who had committed a uh, costly error earlier in the game to tie it up at six all. And then the last of the ninth came the home run off the bat of Chris Chambliss. The victory went to uh, Dick Tidrow. The loss charged to Mark Littell. The starters were Leonard for Kansas City, Dennis Leonard, and Ed Figueroa for the New York Yankees. And thousands of people covered the entire playing field of Yankee Stadium. Right now, they have finally left, and there's just nothing but litter anywhere you look. They set off bombs and they set off firecrackers. They yelled. They paraded for their signs. And they kept yelling, we are number one. And number one they are in the American League. And for those of you who may have just tuned in at a time when you normally might have been listening to Barry Gray, at a time when you would be listening to Long John, and of course Long John will be on uh, very shortly. I have one other thing that I'd like to do right after this message from our sponsor, Getty Premium. If you're like most buyers of regular gasoline, you probably think unleaded gasolines just don't perform. Sure, unleaded gives you a nice clean engine, but it just doesn't have the pep of your regular or for that matter, the low price. Well, you regular buyers are in for a little surprise. Introducing Getty Unleaded Regular. Getty's unleaded gasoline has a high enough octane to be classified a regular. Most unleaded don't. Yet Getty Unleaded Regular actually sells for a couple of cents less per gallon than most other major no -lays. So if you want the octane performance of regular and the clean running smoothness of unleaded for a couple of cents less per gallon, you want Getty Unleaded Regular. Getty Premium and now Getty Unleaded Regular. We've got what's best for your car. In the American League Divisional Playoffs, unlike that that occurred in the National League as the Cincinnati Reds swept the Philadelphia Phils in three straight, winning two in Philadelphia and slamming the Phils as the scene shifted to Cincinnati. The Red Legs sitting around waiting to see whom they'd have to play in the World Series which starts Saturday. The American League playoff started in Kansas City. Billy Martin sent Catfish Hunter to the mound against Larry Gura, who had started out the season for the Yankees, who had come on strong at the end of the season, and Whitey Herzog decided to start him. But Catfish Hunter pitched perhaps the best game of uh, the year as far as he was concerned. In fact, it, it was the best game that he had pitched this year, and he beat Kansas City 4-1. to one. 
But the Royals came right back to defeat the Yankees 7-3 to in Game 2, which was started by Dennis Leonard, who was the starter tonight, but he was relieved by Paul Spritoff. Spritoff got the win. Ed Figueroa started for the Yankees and was charged with the loss. The scene shifted here to Yankee Stadium with a day off for traveling, and the Yankees took a 2-1 to lead as they beat Kansas City 5-3. to Doc Ellis pitching beautifully, relieved by Lyle in the ninth inning. Hassler was charged for the loss as the A's used five pitches in that ball game to try and stem the Yankee tide. And then yesterday, Kansas City beat the Yankees 7-4 to even it all up as the Yankees tried to end it yesterday. Kansas City won it 7-4. to Gura started against Hunter. Bird got the win, though, for Kansas City, and Hunter was charged with the defeat. And here tonight at Yankee Stadium, before the largest crowd of the year, 56,821, it looked as if the Royals, on the momentum of their win yesterday, which tied the series at two games apiece, this was the payoff, got two runs in the first inning, off starter Ed Figueroa, who had won 19 games during the course of the year, had wanted to become the first Puerto Rican to win 20. He only won 19, though. This would not have counted 20 insofar as the regular season was concerned. But I can tell you this, in his mind and in the minds of his fellow Puerto Ricans, they would have counted it number 20, and we'd have all been glad to have counted it at number 20. But the Yankees struck back quickly as Rivers tripled and White got a base hit and Munson singled and Chambliss got a sacrifice fly and the Yankees had tied the score at two all. And in the second inning, after Figueroa had gotten the first man, Rojas single stole second and Martinez then came through with a base hit and it was three to two Kansas City but the Yankees went ahead four to three in the third again Mickey Rivers who got on bases first four times up and the guy that starts things rolling for the Yankees single to center and White walked and Munson uh, came through the base hit and there was a force out at second the Yankees got two and led four to three and that was the way it went until the last half of the sixth inning when Mickey Rivers again came up. This time he beat out a bunt to the pitcher to start things rolling for the Yankees and was sacrificed to second by White. And Munson came through with a timely base hit. And once again, Chambliss came through with a timely base hit. And there was a throwing error by George Brett and the Yankees led six to three and it stayed that way until suddenly the Royals exploded in the eighth inning. Ed Figueroa, who had settled down and pitched magnificently after allowing three hits over the first two innings, he blanked the Royals until the eighth. When Cowens opened with a single, Martin came out, took him out, and brought in Grant Jackson. Jackson gave up a base hit and George Brett then hit a drive into the right field seats for a three run homer and all the excitement here at Yankee Stadium disappeared. The score was tied at 6-6. But I've already told you about the finish. You've heard that over and over. In the last half of the ninth inning, Chris Chambliss hit the first pitch, the very first pitch over the right center field fence for a home run that brought the Yankees their first pennant since 1964 and the 30th in their history. And back here now from downstairs where I know it was Bedlam is John Sterling. John, you called it. Well, Mel, I want to tell you something. I, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. I was pacing at that point, as you know, with Joe Garagiola Jr., the legal counsel of the Yankees, and I said to him, look, Get a door open to the Yankee office so I can shoot through and get down the elevator when Chambliss hits a home run. And darn if he didn't do it. And, uh, you know, I then disappeared. I had to get downstairs and get to that phone in the hallway. I didn't see what uh, happened to this field. It looks like one of the streets in New York during the winter. Well, let me tell you what you missed out here. And, of course, I was 
telling uh, the people. As a matter of fact, I kept telling them over and over, waiting to get word that you right, were downstairs. Right. You know, I know how difficult it is to get through that crowd because they have writers from everywhere, not just New York writers, but and not just Kansas City writers, but writers from Buffalo and Washington. I mean, Baltimore and Washington and, and the West Coast, everywhere. This is like a World Series. And do uh, you know that there were, I would have to estimate, of course, uh, somewhere around six to 8,000 people on that infield. You can see right now where you know, patches of grass oh, have been torn up. Looks like and bottles. they were lighting off, you know, setting off fireworks, lighting fuses, and started yelling and parading around. It was just... I have one question before we yeah. get off. Uh, Long John, Neville, and Candy Jones are waiting very patiently by. Yes. Um, did Chambers ever get to home plate? He finally uh, did, I think. I, I, I lost him in the crowd. I'll tell you one thing. When he turned second, yeah. I, I still wonder whether he ever touched second base because somebody <laughs> grabbed that bag, and I don't think he ever touched it. But after all, according to the rules, he made his effort. The fact that somebody may, I say right. may now, because the crowd had gathered around there, and you, you just couldn't see. You saw them grabbing that bag, and uh, I saw him turn his head to look back, but uh, I don't think there was no second base there. Well, that is really, well, we'll remember that forever and ever and ever. That's a Bobby Thompson-like home run that That's Chandler exactly said. exactly what I said a little while ago. And he has done it over and over and over again, the home run in the third game to turn that series around and bring the Yanks in the game that they eventually won and, and tonight. And it looks, uh, buddy, that we're going to be working again together during the World Series. And it has been great, this uh, five-game American League championship playoff. Uh, baseball has never been better than the past couple of years. And well, I've certainly enjoyed working together with you, John, as you know, and I've said that to you uh, privately. I've said it uh, publicly. And I want to say just this one last thing. It was a beautiful way to finish here at Yankee Stadium where they had won 29 pennants previously and this was the 30th and they had done it basically as they say on power. Right. Uh, but they had great defense. Well, but if it, it was power, it was power tonight. It was great. Our uh, post game championship efforts have been brought to you by Getty Premium new Getty unleaded regular of the higher octane gasolines with the lower prices and I expect we'll have a World Series preview on sometime a Saturday afternoon before the first game from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. And I want to thank our engineer, Danny Bartolucci, here, who's done a great job. Our engineer back at WMCA, Hal Brown, our producer, Sid Gatling, who's been just tremendous tonight coordinating these efforts in two different areas of the stadium. And I'll see you Saturday, uh, Mr. Allen. And, uh, right and stay tuned now for... And the people who really own the nighttime in New York radio, Long John Nebel and Candy Jones. This is John Sterling from Yankee Stadium. The Yankees are American League champions for 1976, and have a very good night. Routh Communications in New York. Coming up, Long John Nebel and Candy Jones. Hey, what do you say? W-N-C-A. W-N-C-A.